Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the homestead. Well, it's finally starting to cool off here in the Ozarks, at least overnight. It's in, actually in the mid 60s this morning, which feels awesome. Unfortunately, it's still supposed to get up to 88 today. So we need to get started before it gets hot again. Let's start with all the animals. Since we've downsized our chickens to only having the six of them, they don't need nearly as much food every day. So we just give one can like this, and this is for the chickens and the ducks. And then they just spend the rest of their day finding bugs and everything else to eat. A lot of days, they don't even finish this. They'd rather eat the stuff they could find. Good morning, chickens. turkeys are anxious to get out. Our broad-breasteds are so big, they're, they've about filled up the opening here when they come out. Good morning turkeys, one at a time. <laughs> Aren't you beautiful? <laughs> Kevin and I have been talking about how well these broad-breasted white turkeys are doing and we think in about a week to 10 days is when we'll go ahead and process them for the freezer. They're looking so good, but they're eating a lot now that they're so big. So we think it's just about time. As soon as the ducks can hear us outside in the morning, they start going crazy inside their house. They want to get out. We get a lot of questions about why we don't put wheels on our rabbit tractors. When you move them the way that we do and just move them sideways instead of the long way, there's really no need for wheels. It's so easy to just pick up one end and move it over two feet and then pick up the other end and move it over two feet. Actually, wheels would just make things even more complicated. It's just about breeding time again for us, for these rabbits. We're going to be breeding our mama, the black mama that we have, we'll be breeding her again. And then out of this litter of four females, we're going to be saving back one of these gray rabbits for breeding as well. The rest of these ladies will either be sold or will go into the freezer for us to eat as a family over the winter. The boy goats are eagerly awaiting their girlfriends. In a couple of weeks, in the middle of October, we'll start breeding our Nigerian dwarf does. We have four of them that need to be bred. Each of these boys will have one girlfriend each in separate pens for the first month. And then in the middle of November, we'll switch to the other two does that haven't been bred and they'll have a different girlfriend for a month. That way, all four hopefully will be bred. We'll have two that will give birth in one month in the spring and two in the following month in the spring. Excuse me. One thing about boy goats is they are very smelly. 
They are mature males, but boy goats also, they urinate on themselves a lot, which gives them even a stronger scent. So we've been feeding the pigs inside the trailer and it's going really well. They actually go in and out of it, no problem. So today I brought down a bucket of grain. It's grain that we've soaked in some of our fresh Jersey milk. We let it sit outside for a full 24 hours so the milk kind of curdles. And then we pour it in a feed trough inside the trailer and the pigs are going crazy for it. Let me show you. Well, now that everybody's fed, it's time to go in and get all of our milking supplies so we can come out and milk Hope. And then we have a pretty big project to work on today uh, regarding Hope and her hay feeder. This hay cradle has been working out really well, but we have decided that we do need to build a top on it so that when it rains, the hay can stay at least a little bit dry. So that's what we're gonna work on today. I've got a plan up here that I think is gonna work. It's just a matter of getting it done. All right, we've got all of our supplies. Time to go in and start milking. Now, one thing is that when we go in to milk the cow, we separate the goats over on the other side of the pen so that they can't get over here because, let's face it, goats can be a little bit overbearing and a little bit annoying when you're trying to get something done. They like to just be in your way. So we keep them over on that half while we're milking so they're not in our way. They're not jumping into our cart. They try to jump on top of the milking machine when it's in the cart. So we need to keep things clean so we keep them separated. We've had some questions lately about why you never see the goats over by Hope. Well, that's because we've had them separated during those times. Otherwise, they actually do spend quite a bit of time together these days. We're milking Hope twice a day right now and each time we give her just enough grain to keep her just nice and still and the grain also helps support her milk supply. So we're using a surge bucket milker. This is actually um, a refurbished one that we were actually picked up on eBay. These were made from 1922 all the way up to 1999. I think this one was from maybe back in like the 60s, but this has been working out so well. Now we've modernized it a little bit by giving it more of a modern pump. Uh, this is just a four CFM, one stage vacuum pump. Not a very big pump, but it does the job really well. And then we run it off of our solar powered generator because we don't have electricity out here. If you guys are interested in knowing more about our complete setup and how it all works, uh, let us know. We'll do a video just about that. But for today, we need to get milking. With this milker, we could milk all four of her quarters at one time. We choose to just do two quarters at a time. It's just less cumbersome and uh, it just seems easier for us to do two quarters at a time. So once the back is completely mil milked out, then we'll switch these two cups up to the front and milk out the front two quarters. She's all done. She's waiting patiently for us to finish up. All the milk now is down in here. 
We just need to disconnect the, uh, the hose here, put it in the cart, get it out of here. Uh, I actually will be doing a teat dip on her too, and then we can let her go. She can get a drink and eat some hay and have a good rest of the day. All right, well, let's go. Hope has adopted me as her baby, I think. Every day now, she just wants to give me kisses before we leave. Are you girls ready to come out now? And visit with Hope. I think she's calling for you. You're free. All that's left to do now is take the milk in the house, we strain it, and then we put it right into bottles and get it in the refrigerator. Right now we're averaging about two and a half gallons of milk a day from Hope, which is excellent. We hope that she keeps that up. As soon as we're done with all of that, we'll be back out to start on our project. So here's the hay cradle that we've been using to feed Hope and our goats. It holds a big round bale of hay and it helps keep it up off the ground. Now the bale that's in there is almost gone, which is why it just looks like a bunch of hay in there right now. But before we put a new bale in, what we're hoping to do is make some type of cover for it that will help protect it from the rain. My plan is to kind of double the size of the circle that's already there and go up and over with some cattle panels to make a cover and then we'll put a tarp on it but we need to measure first to see how long of a piece of cattle panel we'll need and whether or not once that's on there we can still get a bale of hay inside so we need to do some measuring to figure that out and see if we can you know just duplicate and make a complete circle So the first thing we need to do is measure from this side over here all the way over to this side along this curve and that will tell us how big of a piece of cattle panel we'll need. So we're going to start by measuring that first. So that's just about eight feet that piece of pipe right there. So what we need to determine now is if we take an eight foot piece of cattle panel and make that same loop on the top, will it be tall enough to still be able to get a bale of hay inside? The bales of hay that we use are a five foot diameter bale, so they're five feet wide and five feet tall. So we need to determine, and we can do that easily by looking at this, if this is going to make it tall enough. So from there to here is only just over two, just over two feet. Like so two if we quarter. use an eight foot piece of cattle panel here, that's not going to be enough. That's only going to be about four and a half feet tall. So we won't be able to fit a bale in there. So we know we need to use a bigger piece than that to make this loop. The other thing we need to take into consideration too is that we need this area to be roomy roomy enough for us to get the bale in and it's not going to be a tight squeeze. So we need to factor those things in too. Right. These bales weigh about a thousand pounds, about 900 pounds. And so I need to bring them in with the tractor and be able to just slide it right in. It can't be so tight that I just end up pushing the whole feeder out of the way. So, so I think what we should do is use an 11 foot piece to go to make the new loop. What that will do is it'll give us an extra foot and a half on each side, which will also give us an extra foot and a half in the middle. So that means that we'll end up with a six and a half foot tall circle here. That actually is the same size that we have side to side. So we should have plenty of clearance to get a five foot bale of hay in there because we'll have five or six and a half feet here and six and a half feet here. So a five foot bale should slide in pretty easily. At least that's the plan. <laughs> uh, we'll hope that it all works out the way we're planning. So we're gonna go cut the cattle panels. We're gonna cut those at 11 feet. All right, so for those of you who don't know what a cattle panel is, 
Uh, a cattle panel is basically a piece of fencing that you can use for, for cattle. There's cattle panels, there's hog panels, there's all different kinds that you can buy. But cattle panels are uh, 50 inches tall and 16 feet long and they're made out of really heavy duty wire. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one at 11 feet long. Actually I've got two of them here. We're going to cut them both at 11 feet and then those are what we're going to try to use to make an arch over the top of the hay cradle. Alright so we're going to measure this out at 11 feet and that's where we'll cut. So now we have a decision to make because 11 feet is right in the middle of two wires. So we either have to cut it at 10 and a half feet or 11 and a half feet. I'm gonna err on the side of going a little too big and cut it at 11 and a half feet. All right, so that one's cut. I think what we'll do is we'll take this one over and try putting it on before we cut the second one just to make sure all of our numbers are correct because at $20 a piece I don't really want to cut the second one and then waste two if this one is off so we're gonna go put this one on and then we'll decide if the second one can be cut at the same size. Now to attach the cattle panels, I'm going to use two different things. I bought these really heavy duty zip ties that I'm going to use. I'm going to use one of these on each end of each cattle panel. But then in the middle, I'm going to put one of these metal hose clamps. I think that these will hold just fine, but in the rare chance that, you know, these plastic zip ties break, even though these are really heavy duty, we'll have one of these in the middle that will help hold it, you know, hopefully more permanently. So I think between the two of these, this will be good and a good long-term solution. So I've decided this first piece of cattle panel that we're going to put on, on the first side, I'm actually gonna use all hose clamps at first because that way, if we need to make some adjustments, we can take those back off. The zip ties, once they're on, they're on. And those big heavy duty zip ties are almost a dollar a piece. So I don't wanna waste them if I don't have to. So we're going to start, we're going to put three of the hose clamps on this first side and then we can make the arch and make sure that it's going to be the right size before we continue on. Yeah. We're going to bend it. I'm going to put one of these in the middle of that side just to hold it. All right, so we've got the first one up here just as kind of a temporary to see how it's going to do. And I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm going to measure it now and just make sure that our measurements, you know, that what I thought was going to be right is right. So if my measurements were on from the arch to the bottom where the bale sits should be about six and a half feet. So let's Six foot six, exactly. Sometimes that nerdy math really comes in handy. All right. So we have six and a half feet from top to bottom. We should also have six and a half feet, or just about six and a half feet from side to side, which should give us plenty of room to put in our five foot bale. So now that we know that our measurements are on, I'm more encouraged that this is gonna work out exactly how I had planned. Now one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is that we've decided, and this makes sense, I mean in any time you're making an arch out of cattle panels, whether it's for your garden or anything, you know, we wanted to make sure that the panel was down inside the cradle just a, enough that it, the pressure, because this is like a big spring, so there's always pressure pushing out. You want the pressure to be against the cradle itself because the cradle is really strong. You don't want the pressure to be constantly pulling on either the zip ties or the clamps or whatever uh, because eventually those will wear out a lot faster than this cradle will. So now that we know that it's all you know correct, I'm gonna undo this side and we're gonna lay this back flat and we're gonna go cut the other paddle, bring it over and we will be able to arch them both at the same time. 
All right, we've got the second cattle panel cut. We're gonna lay it across the top and try to bend them both at the same time. And we're gonna try to avoid all of the landmines. All right, we have that far side all attached. Now, hopefully we can bend these both at the same time. And then Sarah will have to hold them while I try to quick put on these hose clamps. All right, so the next step is to put on a tarp. This is a eight foot by 10 foot tarp. We're hoping that this will be the right size. I had to kind of guess because I didn't know exactly what size this would end up being when I went to buy it. So let's hope that it ends up fitting at least pretty well. I think that's gonna be just about right. That's awesome. Now we're just gonna use zip ties to attach this. I think that fits pretty well. We have a little extra back here that we're gonna to have to fold under and attach. So I think it's gonna turn out well. Well you guys, I think this turned out awesome. I can't wait to put a new bale of hay in here. I wish we could today, but we're not going to waste the hay that's already in here. When we were planning this project, we were concerned that Hope would no longer be able to eat over the top of the hay cradle. But we've been observing her for about the last two weeks now that we've had her, and really watching how she eats out of that cradle. She either eats from this section down here, or she eats from all the way down at the bottom by the ground. Only a couple times have we seen her eat actually over the top of this bar, which she'll still be able to do from the front and the back. So I'm not too concerned about this kind of covering up her ability to eat. I think she'll still be able to get everything that she needs. So you guys, we wanna just talk with you really quickly about really why we just protected this hay and made this covering for the hay. We just invested in 16 of the large round bales of hay and that is a financial investment of $640. That's what we paid. We hope that that will be an entire year's worth of hay. When you get those big round bales, they're they're really tied up tightly with a netting around it and that netting and it being so tight that will protect those bales from the rain but once we open those up and the hay kind of expands a little bit it's really susceptible to going bad quickly and mold inside of there if it rains when they're uncovered or snows right exactly so that's the main reason why we wanted to go ahead and do this it's going to take our cow quite a long time to eat through one bale. It could be a month. Right, we're anticipating that each bale will last about a month. Even though the goats eat on it a little bit, not much right now at all because they can still browse around, but in the winter they'll eat more. But we still think one needs to last us a full month. That's a lot of opportunity for rain and weather to you know, ruin what we have invested in this hay for our cow. Right. So even though we know that this system won't keep off 100% of the rain or 100% of the snow, it will make quite a difference and we think it will really help protect the investment that we've made in the hay and hopefully help it keep it healthier for our animals as well. So you guys, we hope that you enjoyed 
seeing our thought process when we're going through a project like this. It's fun to bring you guys along as we just kind of figure things out as we go along. A lot of times we have an idea and we kind of know what we're going to do, but it's not until we actually get out there and start working on the project that everything kind of falls together. We hope that you enjoyed that. Yeah, one part about living this lifestyle is that you, you need to be good at just figuring things out. It's not, you know, there's not a blueprint of everything that needs to be done. Some things you just need to figure out as you're doing it. And I think this project is a prime example of how things can actually turn out pretty well. I think this turned out excellent. And I think this is gonna do exactly what we need it to do. I hope this gives you ideas for what you can do on your homestead or maybe for you in the future. We're glad to share it with you. You guys, this is where we're gonna end today's video. We hope you enjoyed it so much. If you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. And the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is to share our videos and share our channels with other like-minded people. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.